Hello everybody, this is Jennifer and I wanted to talk to you guys again about my Filtrum. Now I'm about six or seven months out from getting it pierced. And if you'd seen my first video about getting my Filtrum pierced, um, you would have seen my healing process and the first few days after I got it pierced. And uh, I kind of talked about the process in general just to get some of you comfortable if you were interested in getting your filter and peers. Now I just want to talk about how it is, you know, six or seven months later. I also want to talk to you guys about the jewelry for your filter. I'm a little bit surprised about what I ended up wearing and what I'm comfortable with and what I love and will probably end up wearing in my filtrum as long as I have this piercing. So here I am about six or so months out from getting it pierced. And I wanted to talk a little bit about the healing process long term because in my first video, I was talking about the first few days and now it's completely healed or at least it feels that way. I may be able to switch out jewelry as I like and you know, the, the posts, Although since I did go with a threadless system, I can pull out my jewelry if I want to or if I want to clean it without actually disrupting the post at all, which is such a great idea. I don't know why they didn't come up with this threadless system before, especially for those of you who like to switch out your jewelry often. It just allows you to have that freedom to switch between ends without actually irritating the piercing itself. Because even if your piercing is healed, there's still a chance that you can really irritate it just by pulling out the posts and messing with it that way. So I just think it's just a brilliant system, the whole threadless thing. I switched out my post um, about five weeks out. Uh, I think they say to wait six to eight weeks before you switch it out. I had no problems with my piercing at all. I took really good care of it using saline, you know, uh, in the shower I let water run over it and I also did a really good job of using colloidal silver which I talk about in my other video, how I heal my piercings really quickly. It keeps infections at bay and whatnot. So um, I feel like mine healed really quickly. I switched out the post to a shorter post and then ended up like two weeks later switching it out to an even shorter post so that I could keep my jewelry more flush to my lip. And that's kind of what I wanted to talk about now, the jewelry. So I have had my nose pierced for maybe, oh my goodness, 20 years, <laughs> 20 years or more. And I've always wanted the most subtle, jewelry in my nose, just the teeny tiniest little diamond in my nose. The majority of my other piercings were on various other parts of my body, which you really couldn't see. Uh, so I could wear whatever jewelry I wanted. It didn't matter how big and shiny and bright. I just really wanted to keep the jewelry on my face very subtle. And when I got my Filtrum pierced, I had them pierce it with the tiniest little, I think it was a Neo Metal um, CZ that was maybe one and a half or two millimeters big. I mean, even the piercer said, this is probably a little bit too small to pierce you with, but we'll go ahead and try it. So I had this itty bitty little CZ dot on my lip and of course a, a decently large post of course for healing purposes. I really loved the piercing but something just fell off with me. It just didn't look right with that teeny tiny little stud. So when it came time to start looking for an, a shorter post I started looking for a tiny bit larger of a end to go with it and uh, I, I went in increments, it's really funny. And I, I have this now collection of Neo Metal um, Moonstone ends. <laughs> Enter BVLA, that's when I found out about BVLA and I started falling in love with their ends. I mean, how could you not? They're just gorgeous. And I went off on a limb and I bought what I thought was gonna be just huge, this four millimeter um, milgrain prong end. And I got it in and I put it on and I was like, that's it. That's what I was missing. This piercing kind of requires a larger piece of jewelry. And yes, this is personal preference, of course. But when I look at pictures of people with their Medusa, their filter and pierced, the ones with the teeny tiny little specks on their lip just kind of look like there's a piece of food there or it's just, it's like they're not dedicating to the piercing. 
if that makes sense. It's such a beautiful spot on someone's face, just that little divot above their lip. It's just gorgeous, but I feel like it needs a piece that kind of fits that divot well. And so, of course, this is going to be different for everyone's face and everyone's preference, but but I feel like it really needs to have some piece of jewelry that just fits that section. And if you have a very small kind of, um, I think they call it a Cupid's bow. If you have a real small one, then maybe a smaller piece will look better on you. But most people have a pretty good size um, Cupid's bow there, and, and I feel like it needs to be filled. I got that one in the milgrain prong and it was beautiful and it didn't really have a low profile though. I don't know if any of you have ever seen the, the milgrain series of BVLA, but they, they actually stick out quite a bit. Um, there's quite a bit of gold there. And that also was kind of throwing me off a little bit because, you know, when you turn your head, it just looked like you almost had like a spike sticking out, you know, even though it wasn't pointy, it just stuck out quite a bit. And so, I looked and I fell in love with a very low profile but larger piece by BBLA, which is the uh, Afghan end. And I was able to get an Afghan end um, in um, a rose gold with beautiful blue topaz. And those are six millimeters, so two millimeters larger than what I had had previously. And I thought, okay, now this might be huge and this might look horrible on me. And I absolutely loved it. And that is what I have in now. It's the BVLA Afghan piece, but it has a um, white sapphire in it. And oh my gosh, <laughs> I think that the six millimeter is just perfect for my face. I love it personally. I have seen so many people with larger pieces in their, in their filter room. And I'm not talking about actually, you know, stretching the gauge up or anything. I'm talking about just the size of the end. I just think it looks so stunning, so stunning on people, so much better than just having this tiny little gem. Now, that being said, I think with a lot of piercings and with a lot of people, you kind of have to ease yourself into the piercing, right? Like you first go from not having anything there to a very small little ball or, or gem, and then you kind of size your way up. And that's what I did. I, I had to see what felt good, what I felt comfortable in, and, uh, and what looked good on me. And of course, there's going to be some trial and error there. but. I wanted to make this video because I maybe wanted to save you guys a little bit of money because I know that I went through a little bit of money trying to figure out what size looked best on me. So, you know, maybe giving you these measurements might help you gauge what you might feel comfortable with. I felt like that was something that I Googled a lot, trying to figure out, you know, um, what does a two millimeter look like on someone? What does a three millimeter look like on someone? But now you can see it on me and see if that helps you decide on what size you'd like to go with. So right now I will go through and I will show you the jewelry that I have tried out in my filter room and, and you can see kind of the progression of sizes and, and how they look different uh, enough that it, it does make a pretty good difference on your face. And, and you can see how the different sizes fit the anatomy on my face. So this is the one I was pierced with. This is a Neo Metal CZ bezel set um, 1.5 millimeter end and it is threadless. My piercer was a little bit apprehensive piercing me with something uh, this small for my filter but you know it worked out great and I appreciated him allowing me to kind of ease into that piercing with a smaller gem. The next one I decided to go with was a two millimeter neo metal moonstone end and this is beautiful you know the neo metal moonstone and it doesn't really have that um kind of rainbowy look to it it's just a very pretty gray subtle color and i thought well this is subtle it's not really blingy so i can go bigger and not be so blingy um and that's why i chose that one but again i put it on it was pretty but it kind of looked like just this little i don't know piece of food or or just a bump on my lip. <laughs> I, I just wasn't really excited about it. So I decided to go up and the largest I think they make is a three and a half millimeter and it's beautiful. I mean, it just really is a pretty piece, but it was just missing something. 
So then I found BBLA, and here's that piece that I talked about before, the milgrain prong with an amethyst stone inside. And I really love this. It, the size was really nice, um, but the one thing that I didn't really love about it for that particular piercing is that it, it's tall. It has a high profile, so it's probably like a two millimeter profile on it, and that just didn't seem to fit that section of my face. That's when I started looking for something that is a lot more flat, that would lay flat on my face, and then enter the beautiful Afghan end. Again, this is six millimeters, so I jumped up two millimeters from the last one, and that's when I just fell in love. I knew that this was the piece for me, the size was great, the low profile was beautiful, it has enough of a shine, and um, but it's subtle enough with the gold. I really love the rose gold because it didn't seem as harsh as a stainless steel or a white gold or a sterling silver because it kind of the gold kind of matches my face a little bit more, and so it, it just seemed less harsh to me. And that's something I wanted to mention too. If the stainless steel, the titanium, the white gold, if that just seems too harsh on your face because you know, it's, it's so white, it's so bright, um, and you're afraid to go with something bigger because it's just so bright, you know, there's a couple things you can do. Tone down the color. You know, rose gold kind of goes more with your skin depending on what skin color you have. Maybe, maybe yellow gold goes better. Experiment around with the different colors that you can get out there and see if it just makes it a little bit less harsh. So you could go with a bigger piece and it not just look like it's all someone can focus on when they're looking at your face. And that goes for the stone too. There's plenty of beautiful pieces out there that don't have any stones in them that are just, you know, a beautiful disc or something like that. You know, maybe the stone is distracting for you as well. So experiment around. You don't have to go with 14 karat gold or anything really expensive. You can get stainless steel and titanium in a rose gold color or a yellow gold color, even black or rainbow, you can get a ton of different things. So I found that the rose gold was softer for me on my face. It matched my skin better and so it was just less harsh. Um, so I could go with a larger piece, you know? I think if I had, I know if I had a six millimeter, um, you know, CZ in there, it would be very, very distracting. I hope this helps you make a decision and not spend a ton of money just experimenting with a bunch of different pieces. Uh, I will say that, speaking of money, going with the higher end brands, especially the ones that have the threadless system, is so worth it because, again, if you do want to start switching them out or you do want to test them out uh, different sizes or different styles, you can do that so much easier by just pulling the end out and putting the new one in without disrupting your post at all. It's it's cheaper, I think, in the long run because you're not switching out posts all the time. Um, it's it, You find a post size that you like and you just have fun switching out the jewelry. Or like me, you find a piece of jewelry that you love and I will probably wear this one forever. It just, I feel like it suits me. So I have no reason to get a new one. My advice is just to go bigger because I feel like if you feel like something's wrong with how it looks with the jewelry that you have in, it's probably too small and, and you know, dedicate to something a little bit larger. Keep in mind your skin color and the harshness of the white gold and the titanium and stay open to golds. I've never been a gold person, ever, ever. <laughs> I've always worn silver, but I've always loved copper. And those of you who have seen rose gold know that, you know, rose gold is a mixture of gold and copper. It has that coppery look to it that's just really, really beautiful. It's not necessarily pink. Like I said, I think of it more as like a copper color. So, you know, experiment, see what looks good on you. And uh, I hope you love your piercing if you do have it. And if you don't, I highly recommend it. It's a beautiful place to get pierced. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them down in the comments below. And uh, until next time, be well.